Hello, and welcome back to Legacy of Leaders, where we interview the brightest and most interesting leaders in the community. I'm your host. Today is no different. I have a very special guest with me today, and his name is David Grealish from Classic Computing Media. Thank welcome you. in. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for being here. So I am so excited about everything we have <laughs> going on here. And so first of all, for those that have not heard of Classic Computing Media, go ahead and tell us a little bit about what you do. So I am a computer historian and I've been collecting computers for over 30 years and wow. I've done podcasts and um, I've published a book mm -hmm. and I used to do newsletters. I've written, had some articles published and recently I uh, was involved in a documentary about another uh, failed Apple computer <laughs> called Apple Newton, by the mm -hmm. way, and I made a short for it and that kind of inspired me to um, want to make a documentary of a computer that's been an integral part of my life, mm. the Apple Lisa. Okay. And so that's that's why I'm here, what it's all about, is I'm making a documentary about the Apple Lisa. And so how has the Apple Lisa been a part of your life? So, good question. <laughs> <laughs> and it leads up to like, hey, why are you making this documentary? Right, so right. It'll answer that too. So basically, I'll try to keep it short, but in the late 80s, I was in college and I got a job at an Apple dealer. Okay. And, uh, and I saw the Macintosh for the first time. And actually, I'll go ahead and show this picture. Sure. So this is the original Macintosh. Wow. So back when they were little black and white, little yeah. tiny, you know, computers and stuff. And in working with this, um, it pretty much I became convinced very quickly, like, this is the future of computing. This is the computer I want. You knew early. Very, yeah, but they were very expensive. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I had no hope of affording one. So uh, a few years go by, I'm working at another Apple dealer. And then one day, someone brought in a computer. And I'm like across the store from them. They walk in with it, take it to the service department. And I'm trying to figure out what it is. They leave. So I go to the service department. I'm talking to the tech. Right. And it was turned out to be the Apple Lisa, wow. which kind of looks like a big double Mac, maybe. It does. I have never heard of and, that. Well, I hadn't either then. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just fascinated with it. And um, it was also known as the Macintosh XL late in its life. And Apple killed it and canceled it. Got it. But, like, a few weeks later, whatever, um, yeah, this time there's no internet, of course, late 80s, 1990, actually. And, um, and I'm looking through magazines, and I see an ad for this company in Utah called Sun Remarketing. And they sold new old stock leases upgraded to run like a Macintosh. So it was kind of mm. uh, the best of both worlds, if you will, but cheaper. Right. And I had just enough money on a credit card available to buy it. Right. And that became my first Macintosh. Wow. And it opened the whole door to my career in desktop publishing, pre-press, when I want to be a computer tech, which I am now, and a, and a writer. Mm -hmm. um, but then it also gave me the, the, I just became so fascinated by it that I just looked into its history, mm -hmm. and that just um, sort of blossomed into my interest in the history of Apple mm, computer yeah um, and then computer history in general and so then I just started uh, then I um, I decided to start collecting computers mm -hmm. so I started collecting computers and writing about them and I started a club and yeah and wow. <laughs> the rest is history, right? Yeah. So you are so much more than an IT expert, but you're a true historian. Yeah, I'd like to think so. Yeah. It took me a long time before I started um, calling myself that. Because <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't have a degree or anything, but right. yeah, I'm a computer historian. So. Well, tell us about the history that's here on the table. This is fantastic. So, Give us a little insight. So I brought the pictures. I couldn't bring these computers in. So right. They're probably that, pretty heavy, so right? So the original <laughs> Mac and Elisa. Yeah. But the reason I brought these in was just to kind of show how technology has changed so much. Mm -hmm. So what's on the table? here this is a reproduction but it's totally accurate from externally okay. but the very first was generally considered the first commercially available personal computer wow. 1975 the Altair made by Mitz and um, and if you look on the front it's got little switches and stuff and lights okay. and the reason I brought this other computer this is another reproduction mm -hmm. is just to demonstrate what, what the lights did but this type of computer so again 1975 so lights will come on this in just a second just let me know, then I'll turn it back around. But mostly computer hobbyists or engineers and stuff, they'd buy these kind of things back in the day because mm -hmm. you had to really know what you were doing to, to do anything with them. Right, Is it right. coming on? Not yet. Oh, there it is. There it I see the flashes. <laughs> yeah. But they would show different addresses in the processor and, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. This is actually a reproduction of a mini computer, which predates personal computers. So mm -hmm. I won't go into mm -hmm. that. So this is 1975, okay? So this is um, a Commodore 64 from 1982. Wow. And um, so this is seven years later, mm -hmm. but just to demonstrate how much it changed by then, how much it advanced, even though this is super primitive now. Right. But this, it would be an example of a consumer computer. So like a regular person might actually go buy this, go home, and they could do something useful with it. Mm. They'd have to be an engineer or a computer hobbyist mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So again, about 1982. And, um, and then a couple other 
things I brought was the original iPhone. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so, and this is kind of cool. That so is a blast the box from this everything. Past. So this is 2007. That's mint condition right there. And wow. Yeah, not, not, and actually it was used when I bought it. Was it? So wow. yeah, you can hold it. So that's the original iPhone. Very nice. And so we're what, 16 years later? Eight gigs of memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this is the original Android phone. Wow. So now that looks like a phone I had. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, just to kind of demonstrate how things have changed, mm -hmm. you know, so much in a mm -hmm. short amount of time. Yeah. Even though phones still look like this, for the most part, they're just a lot bigger. Yeah. Well, we're almost out of time. Tell us um, about your documentary a little bit, and then why should people care about the history of all of this <laughs> stuff, right? So, um, so it's called Before Macintosh, the Apple Lisa. Mm -hmm. And the, the basic premise of the film, and, I, and of course it's a documentary, and I interview a bunch of people that were involved in it. Mm -hmm. But most people never heard of the Apple Lisa, and it was actually named by Steve Jobs after his daughter, mm. Lisa. And if you ever saw any of those movies that came out some years ago, right. you would see that. Yeah. But the reason we should care is because even though it was a market failure, it f fed in the technology and a lot of people working on it right into the Macintosh, which wasn't a big success originally. Mm -hmm. But obviously Apple's built their whole business on it. They're, they're right. huge now. Yeah. But whether you use an Android or an iPhone or you use Mac OS or you use Windows, mm -hmm. arguably it all traces back to the Apple Lisa. Wow. And even though there's some computers that had mice and graphical user interfaces, primitive ones before mm -hmm. the Lisa, mm -hmm. that influenced it, the one thing that really makes it different, and one thing, now, like the real one of these and these and that all have in common with it is a microprocessor. Mm, okay. So this had a microprocessor, Very like, you know, cool. 46 and Pentium. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, the David, A12, I, whatever. I could talk to you about this all day long, and you're clearly very passionate, um, but we are out of time, unfortunately, <laughs> thank so wow. thank you so much for thank being you. here today. Real if fun. you want to learn more about David and his documentary, make sure you go to IWantABuzz.com, and we will see you next time on Legacy of Leaders.